Hello everyone, I'm Chris Coppell with Nilfisk University and I'm here today to share with you our course on settings and adjustments for advanced industrial sweepers. The reason that we have this course is primarily to show operators how to make sure that their machine is working properly so when you demonstrate the machine it's going to do what it was designed to do and that is to pick up dirt, debris and control dust. But this training is also equally important for technical service people so that when they've worked on a machine and they've done repairs on machine, they know how to set the machine into proper operation so they can test to make sure that the product is functioning correctly, sweeping up dirt, controlling dust, and doing what the machine is supposed to do. So to start, let's frame out the key areas that we're going to cover today in this particular training sequence. First, we're going to talk about the main broom, how to install the main broom, how to care for the main broom, and most importantly, how to properly set the main broom to the floor for optimal sweeping performance. With regard to the main broom, we also want to talk about main broom selection, the various types of main brooms that are available through Advanced Industrial, and which of these main brooms are best suited for what type of applications. Next, we're going to move our way down to the side brooms and we're going to address the issues of how to install the side broom, how to adjust the side broom for proper sweeping, and how to care for the side broom when it comes time to maintain and replace. Third, we're going to talk about the machine's dust control system, how to care for the dust control system with regard to the filter, how to service the filter, how to clear out and clean out the hopper and maintain the hopper, and most importantly, how to maintain, check, and replace seals and gaskets that ensure proper dust collection in the dust control system itself. Next, we're going to move into the operating system of the machine, and we're going to talk a little bit about how you put the machine into a sweeping mode to check all of these adjustments to make sure that the machine is performing properly and sweeping up dirt and maintaining dust control. In this training, we're going to also want to cover the skirts, the gaskets, and the seals that are incorporated by this machine in order to maintain dust control, where they are, how to maintain them, how to replace them. So the first area that we're going to address in this training is how to install the main broom and how to establish the proper setting of the main broom to the floor to ensure optimal sweeping performance. The first thing that we should do before we start is raise the hopper because as you'll see in a few minutes, it's necessary to have a frontal view of that main broom in order to reinstall it once we've taken it out of the brush cavity. Down below, you'll notice this red assembly protruding from the left side of the compartment, and this is for the safety latch, which ensures that the hopper can't fall down if it should lose hydraulic pressure. And we'll take and we'll front load that safety mechanism with weight by dropping the hopper until it's forced in place and stops. Now that we've opened the hopper, you can see that we have full frontal view of the main broom assembly. And as I mentioned, this will become important later on when we attempt to align the brush core with the drive side of the brush hub. Now it's time to access the main broom. To do this, situate yourself to the rear right side of the machine. You'll notice back at the back of this casting is a latch. And when the latch is opened, this side door panel will give you full access to the main broom. This is the idler arm assembly and it's hinged so all you have to do is simply pull back like so and it gives you open and free access to the main broom. To remove it, simply take and pull out like so. Now that we have the main broom removed from the machine, this is the time that the operator or a service technician is going to want to check the broom to make sure that there is not debris or material wound around the core of the broom or the bristles. A lot of times you'll have shrink wrap or you'll have banding material that has wound itself around and we'll have to take a razor knife or some kind of a cutting tool, cut that away and remove it from the peripheral of the brush. The second thing to be checked at this point is the actual bristles themselves. They should be checked to make sure that they haven't been damaged or that bristles are missing. 
But this is also a good time to check and make sure that the lengths of the bristles haven't worn down to a point that they're no longer sweeping effectively. Check your use and care manual for specifications, but typically, by the time this bristle gets shorter than an inch or so, it loses its direct throw or flicking action, and that's the time that you want to take and replace this assembly. Now that we have the brush removed from the brush cavity, this is an excellent time to take and check and to make sure that all the seals and gaskets are intact and in place. You've got a dust skirt located here. You have a vacuum pressure seal here. You've got skirt and deflection material up here and back at the rear of the brush cavity. Simply look and make sure that they haven't been torn or perforated or that they're even missing. Because if they are, you'll need to replace these items to ensure two things, proper sweeping and proper dust control. Advanced Industrial provides several different types of main brooms, depending on the sweeping application, such as a smooth concrete floor or a rough parking deck, we have the right broom for that application. The standard brooms are typically a polyfiber, and they're reinforced with stainless steel wire. But the more rough the surface, the more aggressive or the more rows of fiber you're probably going to want to have. So check and make sure that based on the type of main broom you have installed in the machine, you've checked our brush guide to ensure that you have the right composition for that application. Okay, here we are at the brush cavity of the machine. And you'll notice to the right side is the actual drive hub for the brush, the main broom assembly. And also what you'll notice machined into the hub is a notch. And there's another notch on the opposing side of that hub. Those are important to make note of because their relative position or orientation will dictate how you have to have the main broom positioned when you insert it back into the brush cavity and have it made up with the notches that are built into the core of the main broom. What you're seeing now is the inverted side of the actual main broom looking down into one of the cores. There's a plate assembly that's seated about six, seven inches down into the center of the core. And you'll notice that to the left and to the right, there are protruding notches. And these are the two items that are going to seat inside of those grooves that we just showed you on the drive hub side of the machine. So when we insert the broom, we'll want to make sure that we have the orientation of those notches exactly the same as we saw them inside the machine at the brush drive. Before we attempt to insert the main broom back into the machine, note that these notches align with those protruding blocks that you saw inside the core. So really at this point, all you need do is to make sure that the orientation of these notches is roughly the same as the grooves that you saw in the drive hub underneath the machine within the actual brush cavity. Once you've made this alignment, just simply slide the brush forward until it stops. And then at this point, push down a little bit on the brush so it seats up onto that drive hub assembly. Do a final check and reorientation of the notches, push forward, and then your brush is inserted. Now it's time to button up. To do that, we'll take the idler arm assembly, make sure that these two pins are lined up with the notches, we'll close the door, and we'll help the alignment along here with that core by lifting it up and then seating it. And once it seats, you're ready to go. How you know that you have properly installed the broom into the drive side of the hub is by checking this plate and making sure that it lines up parallel to this plate. If for any reason this plate is sticking out a little bit, that indicates that you did not get the main broom properly seated onto the drive hub. In this case, we're good to go. Simply close the latch, and now we're ready to adjust the broom for sweeping. Now that I've reinstalled the main broom, I'm going to go ahead now and drop the hopper so that we can check out the dust control system. To do this, I've got to take the preload off the hopper. I have to pull back on the safety latch and release it, and then we'll let the hopper down.
Before we move any further with the settings and adjustments on this industrial sweeper, we want to take a close look at the dust control system. This can really be the Achilles heel of any sweeper, because if you don't have good positive dust control while you're sweeping, it renders the system basically useless. So checking the dust control filter on a regular basis and checking all of the supporting components, such as the shaker, the seals, and the gaskets, is absolutely critical. We'll start with that right now. First. We'll go ahead and release the latches for the hood. And this will give us complete access to the actual filter assembly. Now that we have access to the dust filter, the first thing that we're going to want to check is whether or not that filter is clean or has been properly maintained. To do this, we're just going to simply loosen these tie-down knobs. They do not need to be completely released or removed. Once these knobs have been loosened, you can simply slide this assembly off. You can also remove the electrical connection so that the whole assembly can be removed from the machine and the filter. So here's the panel filter on this particular sweeper. This is the clean side where the air is passing through. But underneath is the dirty side of the filter. If this filter is not completely clean, meaning if it's caked, built up, or blinded with dust and lint, it's going to seriously reduce the efficiency of the filter, and your machine will begin to blow dust out from underneath the skirts. So to keep that from happening, filters should be maintained on a daily basis. The best way to maintain filters like this today are to first take and tamp the filter out on the floor and get the gross soilage and particulate removed from the pleats. Next. You can take an industrial vacuum with a general purpose dusting tool and you can vacuum and comb these filters clean. That is a superb way of maintaining the filter. When the filters get very dirty, they can also be immersed in a tub of water and they can be cleaned with water, providing that you give the filter pleats adequate drying time. In most cases, that's several days. So if you are going to wet clean the filter, it will be necessary to have one or two backup filters to use while the primary filter is drying. It is also indicated that you can take and use forced air to reverse blow the air out of the filter, but based on concerns today with indoor air quality and with the health of operators and users of the product, it's not a real good idea. Once the filter has been checked and the filter has been serviced, cleaned, or replaced as needed, we can go ahead and we can reinsert the filter into the filter compartment. Likewise, we'll now take and we'll reinstall the filter shaker assembly. Once we've done our maintenance or replacement of this filter cartridge, it's important to check the gaskets or the seals that create the negative airflow inside the hopper. This pressure to sensitive seal when it seats on top of the hopper will create that airtight lock. What's important is to make sure that the seal is intact, that it hasn't lost its resiliency or it hasn't been cut or torn. If it is, it's really important that it be replaced immediately. The next step in the sequence is to take and inspect the side broom assemblies or the side brushes. First thing I'm looking for is to make sure that I don't have any debris or banding material that is wound around the brush, which often happens in many applications. If it is, I'll take a knife or some kind of cutting tool and remove that debris or that material. Next, I'm going to check for wear. The whole purpose of the side broom is to give reach out capability to pick up edged debris and then move it out into the center of the cleaning path so the main broom can pick it up. Essentially, you want to replace the side broom whenever the bristles get to a length that they can no longer properly deflect the material from where the customer wants to move it, whether it's under a gondola or at a point where the floor meets the wall. When that happens, there's a hitch pin assembly here that snaps right out and allows us to take and pull the side brush right off the drive shaft. And then from there, we can take and install the new assembly and then reinstall the hitch pin here. The next step is going to be for us to establish the proper setting of the main broom and the side broom to ensure that they're sweeping correctly. Let's start with the main broom. How we do this is that we start up the machine and we engage the main broom to the floor while it's rotating. 
At the same time, we keep the machine in one place for about 10 to 20 seconds so that that brush creates a wear pattern on the floor. Once we've done that, we disengage the main broom from the floor, we roll the machine back a few feet, and then we look down and we expect the actual width of that pattern. That pattern should ideally be somewhere between two and three inches wide for optimal sweeping, depending on the actual type of surface that you're trying to sweep. Let's go ahead and run through the process. Before I actually begin this process, there's something important that you need to note. We're working with the SW8000, which is really the benchmark product of the Advanced Industrial Sweeper line. When you turn the machine on and you engage the brush, you're also moving forward, because the only way that you can engage the brush to the floor is by pressing down on the accelerator pedal. But in order to keep the machine in one place, to establish that wear pattern that we require, it'll be necessary to press down on the brake while you press ever so slightly on the pedal. That will engage the main broom, but it will keep the machine from moving forward. You only need to freeze the machine into this position for about 10 to 20 seconds in order to get an adequate wear pattern on the floor. So here, we'll go ahead and do it now. We've just completed that wear pattern exercise. We dropped the main broom to the floor. We kind of towed and heeled the accelerator to make sure that that broom was engaged to the floor and kept running for about 20 seconds. Then we moved the machine forward, and as a result, you can see here the wear pattern that it left in the floor. That pattern is about three inches, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, and that's about optimum wear pattern or the maximum amount of brush contact or preload that you want to apply to a floor for sweeping. For floor surfaces that tend to be rougher, you may want to reduce the amount of contact in order to reduce the load on the broom. And for floor surfaces that are smoother, like this sealed concrete, you may want to increase the down pressure a little bit so you get a better direct throw action on those smoother surfaces. But at the end of the day, you want to create a wear pattern that's not less than two inches, but not much more than three inches in pattern. That will give you your optimal sweeping performance. Let's take a moment and talk about the side broom assembly for this machine. In order for it to be adjusted, you'll use this control knob here. And when you begin to turn the control knob in a clockwise direction, you will actually raise or reduce the amount of bristle contact to the floor. Conversely, if you take and you rotate this knob assembly in the counterclockwise position, you will slowly lower or increase the amount of bristle contact to the floor. In either case, you want to make sure that you have nominal contact to the floor surface. Not too much, not too little. Also, the side broom assembly is mounted to the drive system in such a way that it's favoring pressure to about the 2 o'clock mark because it's right in this zone of the actual brush that you're getting most of your debris deflection, and that's about where you want to set the pressure, or at least favor the pressure setting. The next step is to check to make sure that we have proper side broom setting. To do this, I'm going to turn the machine on, and I'm going to engage the side broom. And what I'm going to look for is to make sure that I have just nominal bristle contact to the floor. Not too much, not too little. At the end of the day, we just want to make sure that there's enough bristle contact that we're deflecting debris, material, and particles articulate effectively out into the middle of the machine so the main broom can pick it up as we pass. So here goes. What you just saw was a good example of proper side broom contact to the floor. Later on, as we go into the testing procedure, you'll get a really good visual application of how well that side broom is working when it comes to deflecting material out into the center of the machine. And so that brings us to the next and to the final step, testing the machine for proper operation. Well, the next step, and perhaps the most important step in the whole process, is to get on the machine, fire it up, and make sure it's sweeping the floor properly. To do this, we've set up a debris layer, and you'll see the most common types of debris, particulate, and dirt that folks encounter in industrial uh, type conditions or in municipal sweeping type uh, applications. 
So for example, we have here crushed bottles, drink containers, cups, pallet chips, banding materials, tie-down straps, shrink wrap, paper, dust, wood uh, sawdust, and a whole array of different types of debris. The idea is to take and make a pass with the machine and make sure that the machine is functioning properly in three specific areas. Number one, that the main broom is picking up the bulk of the material. Number two, that the side broom is edging properly and moving debris from the far extremities of the sweeping area into the path of the main broom. And number three, that the machine is controlling dust. So let's get started. The next thing that any real sweeper pro will do is to actually take the machine now and go backwards and check and see whether or not any of that debris or that material got stuck between the main broom and the hopper. It's a phenomenon called lip loading and it actually happens quite a bit on surfaces that are smooth or coated like this one. One way to make sure that you don't experience lip loading with your machine is to be sure that one of the last passes you make with the machine while you're sweeping is over an expansion joint or a construction joint. What will happen is any debris that gets caught tumbling in front of the bane broom will get caught in that joint and then as the machine passes forward and the circulating main broom hits it, it will punch that material into the hopper to make sure that you've got a clean sweep and when you're done, you don't have any unwanted debris or material caught between the brush and the hopper. Let's take a look and see how we did. Not bad, absolutely clean, free of debris, dust and particulate. And if you take a look, the air is absolutely clean. So we did what we set out to do. We were able to test and make sure that the machine swept properly, that the side broom worked properly, and that the dust control system was working properly. At the end of the day, this is critical because this is what your customer paid and spent their hard-earned money on, a machine that's going to work and work effectively and dependably day in and day out. And unless you have your machine set up properly before a demo or after you've done your service work, your customer's not going to be satisfied. Well, that just about concludes our training program for settings and adjustments for advanced industrial sweeping equipment. In summary, remember, if you're going to demonstrate a product like this, you have to make sure that it's performing absolutely perfect in order to get the order. Because at the end of the day, that's what the customer's looking for. A machine that's going to sweep all the stuff off the floor and control the dust while it's doing it. If you're a service technician and you've got done doing a costly repair on the machine, it's vitally important that you make sure that the machine is working working properly before you leave. Otherwise, if it's not, the customer's not going to see the value of your service work. So thank you for your time. That's it for now. Chris Coppell, Nilfisk University, good being with you.